what's up my tricksters it's been to the house of why joe your friendly neighborhood you Oh superhero and i'm in the tiny little corner over here so i know that you're you're looking at the pretty lady and going that's not ben <laughs> Hi. Uh, this is lissy she is uh an adult entertainer and we're gonna be talking about the the only fans uh debacle and its impact not only on her community but how it could impact others uh, but before we get into those topics, I want you guys to, to remember to check out my description. I, I have an affiliate link that you can use to support the channel. If you're looking for custom sleeves, you know, you want to put something that may be your own art or, you know, maybe if you're another content creator, you want to put your logo on there. If you're, you know, they make so, uh, you know, sleeves and mats and stuff, check out your play mats. They make them custom. They can put on pretty much any artwork you want on there. So, uh. You know, so go to Lissy's page, you know, get get you some custom sleeves with her face on them. You know, you should you should do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So, Lissy, why don't you give our, the audience the the TLDR? What, what, is, what happened with the OnlyFans situation? Well, uh, a couple weeks ago was when I found out about it. And I actually didn't even find out about it through OnlyFans. I found out it through other people, other creators. Um the announcement that their investors or something were pulling unless they pulled us from their platform mm -hmm. and our content from their platform. So that was announced saying it was going to happen in October. So of course we all were in an uproar and started researching other sites. And then as that happened the other day, we were all sent a mass email, which I kind of, I find it kind of funny that this is when they decided to get a hold of us. Not the first time when it all went down. Mm -hmm. But when they decide to redact what they said, so they backpedaled and tell us, yeah, they backpedaled, said that they weren't worried anymore, and that we shouldn't be worried. And then I went and searched the, their policies again, and they were all changed back. Okay, that's that's kind of funny. I guess you know because, uh, and I'm gonna kind of add to that because I, you know, I I follow other people who do what you do, and I was, and I have other friends who do it, and they were talking about this whole thing, and. I saw a lot of stuff on Twitter about it, and uh, I don't know. It was just kind of like, and they were they were mad. Like, I mean, I never seen so many ticked off people. Like, I, I felt the heat through my cell phone. I went, oh, I need to put that down. <laughs> well, because it really, it felt like they just, it, they built their platform off our backs, and then when things went wrong, instead of trying to figure out a different way of handling it, they just looked at us and said, well, peace, we don't need you anymore. Yeah, basically said, good luck. Yeah. That's like Burger King saying they're not going to sell burgers anymore. Like, dude, that, that's exactly. what you do. And that's a lot of conversations I had with people. They're like, that's the only thing I know that OnlyFans does. And why a couple people were like, why would I want to pay money subscriptions to see people cooking or yeah. doing art when they do that on their lives on a bunch of different platforms for free and yeah. I could just send them gifts when I can. Yeah. Yeah. Or why would they go to the only fans? Why not they go to Patreon? That's kind of like, that's kind of for the vanilla <laughs> people, you know? Exactly. So even if they went through with this and they didn't redact what they said, what would have happened was people still wouldn't have gone to that site because unless they were looking for adult content because that's the only thing their mind is going to associate it with anymore. Yeah. Well, I thought I saw that their that their thing was like, "Oh, we you can still do like being nude, but you can't do anything sexually explicit." So, basically, it would just be naked Instagram. Well, you weren't even allowed to show the good parts. You it was just like Instagram. You had to cover up the good parts. And when this all started happening, I actually got my cover picture, my profile picture taken down. Whoa. Um, that had been up there for months. Don't you and then all of a sudden what was there, up there like was wrong. In, in your underwear or something? Like, so it's like a tame It photo. was very tame. Very tame. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's just... Okay, that's just wild. That's just wild. That is... Well, when that happened was how I knew it was actually happening. Yeah, that's that's kind of the red flag. Red flag. That was Hell, that's not even a red flag. That was like 18 red flags. Just went... <laughs> Well, and it upset me because then I, in turn, and I'm sure a lot of other creators did the same thing I did, I sent out a mass message to all my subscribers because I wanted to warn them in a good amount of time. So, mm -hmm. like, I felt a month was a good amount of time to let them, you know, take off their reoccurring subscriptions, stuff like that. 
I warned people on my other platforms when I went live, like, hey, this is happening. Please don't subscribe. I was just on the verge about to take it off of my Linktree link mm-hmm. um, until I had a message from a friend when I woke up the one morning and he said, hey, did you get the email from OnlyFans? And I said, no. And I checked my email and I was like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> they backpedal quick. I, you know what I, I was like, now was... I look like the idiot to all my subscribers. No, you like don't. I just mass messaged all of them, said, hey, I, this is happening. I got to stop. You you got to unsubscribe. Don't waste your money. And now I have to message them all again yeah. and be like, oh, huh, never mind. Well, that's not on you. That's on OnlyFans on there. So, you know. I know. But at the same time, it's still I feel like it looks bad on me. Yeah. Business wise. Yeah. Nobody like likes backpedaling, period. Yeah. It's like, are we doing it? Or are we not? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think from what it looks like as an outsider looking in, it it looks to me like all of the adult content creators were like, OK, well, I guess we're going to other platforms now. And OnlyFans was like, wait, no, my money. Well, the other platforms even made their own announcements. And it was like they were jabbing no. at OnlyFans in these announcements without actually naming them. But they were like, you know, this will never happen here. Yeah. This is an adult site. Come on over. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you. I bet you there's like five other platforms that just made bank off of this whole debacle. And it looks to me like um, uh, a lot of the adult entertainers are going to be uh, diversifying. Like from what I'm seeing, a lot of them are not staying on OnlyFans. They're going to go from they're going to do they're still doing OnlyFans, but they're also going to do whatever other X site is. I, they're, they're switching their focus. Yeah. Are you thinking you're going to do the same thing? You're going to do a little bit of OnlyFans here and a little bit of like pick another site that lets you do something similar over there? Uh, yes, that is my plan. I've been uh, researching a couple different sites because, uh, I mean, it took a lot for me to even sign up for OnlyFans because that's mm-hmm. a lot of personal information you're throwing out there to a company you know nothing about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's probably going to take me a while to find another site that I'm comfortable with and that I fully trust. Mm-hmm. But when I do, I will be switching to that platform. I might keep up my OnlyFans for a while until I do that, until I get that one up and running. But after what they just did, they lost their trust. Yeah, I, I lost trust in them. Because what's going to happen when you know all of this calms down and then a year from now it happens again? Yeah. I think that was another thing that reminds me of that I noticed a lot of sex workers were talking about was they were worried about the word suspended. They didn't say mm-hmm. canceled. They said suspended. So that just that implies that it's just kicked down the road. And a lot of people were really bothered by that choice of wording. Yep. So they chose wrong on that choice. Of, they gave us all they already seeded the, that distrust mm-hmm. and then using those terms. It didn't make it any better. That just clicked in our heads like, oh, so you are trying to shush us because you realized what was happening. Yeah. And now you're just trying to kick it, like you said, kick it to the future. Yeah. And expect us not to be smart enough to realize the wording that you're using. Yeah. Which I, I imagine as somebody who's who's done sex work, this isn't anything new for you. That's another thing I was seeing a lot on Twitter is a lot of people who've been doing this for a while – have been saying this isn't new. This is something that happens reoccurring that a lot of sex workers have had to deal with where, like, for example, I think I saw somebody say something along the lines that Patreon actually used to let people do sex work on their platform. And then That's they- what I heard. Yeah, so I, I, I think that we, I think you're doing the smart thing. I think you're you're using the platform you already have now while it's while it's here, but be getting going ahead and like doing your homework on the other ones. To see what's yeah, happening. well, I mean, at the same time, it wasn't that smart of me to put all my eggs in one basket. I should have done what a lot of other workers were doing where they had eggs in baskets all over. Yeah, Those of us like me who had all of our eggs in one basket just realized that that was not a smart business move on our point, on our part. Yeah, I definitely have, uh, even as a vanilla content creator, I definitely have been uh, doing that as well. Even like, like for example, I make YouTube content, but I also do TikTok stuff, even though I'm not as big on TikTok. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Doesn't matter the numbers. Yeah, I, I still have another place where I can make content and be and be my goofy self. But the point that I was getting at is like, you know, I think that everybody kind of has to do that now, regardless of what you do on the internet, because it's looking like nothing is safe. Exactly. I mean, there's so many different platforms changing their policies almost monthly. Yeah. Well, 
But now I'm going to get, this is the part of the, the segment where I actually get to educate you a little bit. Because before the camera started rolling, guys, <laughs> I told Lissy about some of the reasons why some of this stuff was happening. Because I've been paying attention to it on Twitter. And uh, apparently there is a, a non-profit, quote-unquote, uh, organization called Exodus Cry. Now, from what I understand, they're a hyper-religious organization. And their focus is to get rid of porn on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, they claim that they're trying to help people who, uh, who are trafficked. Um, but the thing, the, so they're so from, but from what I'm reading from all the, the people who do sex work for a living and have done way more homework on it than I have, uh, the way it looks like the way that from what they're saying is is that exodus cry really is just trying to get rid of porn and they're using the very real problem of human trafficking as a mask to cover what they're really after which is they're trying to get rid of adult content on the internet so my i think one of the biggest reasons they people are against porn is because a lot of those religious people do feel like we're we're not a hundred percent consenting to this and we're doing it or we're forced to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, there are people out there who are forced to do it and aren't consenting. And yes, they need help. And I'm all for helping those people. Mm -hmm. I'm a consenting 28 year old, about to be 29 year old adult. Mm -hmm. If I want to show my hoo-ha and my tits on, oh, I don't know if I should have said that, but <laughs> if I want to show my part on the internet, mm -hmm. that's my business. And honestly, doing it on the internet to me is the safest way to do it. Mm -hmm. That's, that makes a lot of sense, especially because uh, it's it's very strange to me if that's their their goals and if their goal was truly to stop people from being victimized, it doesn't make any sense for them to basically deplatform people like yourself. No, they should be going to street corners in big cities or, you know, yeah. places like that. Yeah. Not the internet, or you're at least go after the right people on the internet. Yeah. But so far, from what I understand, what they're doing is they're attacking uh, credit card companies like MasterCard and Visa so that they won't do business with adult entertainment, which is very f funny to me because I would, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me that uh, these credit card companies would even cave because don't they like money? They do, but at the same time, they have an image to adhere to. They don't want to end up looking like the bad guy or being on the wrong side of the fence, so... Ultimately, they usually end up on the wrong side of the fence because they don't want to hurt people's feelings. Yeah. And I don't know. It's so. I, I don't guess, really know much about it to like put too much opinion yeah. into it. Yeah. I was going to say my the, the opinion I want to ask is, is like. Excuse me. I I ate something that's keep making me burp a lot. And I'm like trying not to <laughs> burp into the, into the microphone because, you know, I don't want some poor. Poor Yu-Gi-Oh person who's going to be listening to this and going, oh, God, my ears. <laughs> but um, I'm sure we've already traumatized somebody. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, better out than in, Shrek always says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> but um, I was going to say, i got to stop laughing. I'm easily entertained, Lissy. You can't be making jokes like that. I'm going to be, I'm just going to start chuckling. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm funny sometimes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But I was going to say like, so I don't know. So what are your opinions on how those of us who are not sex workers can assist sex workers through these, through these, these kind of trying events? Uh, stop putting so much stigma on it and judging us for it. Uh, well, that would like I said in previous interviews with you, mm -hmm. just because we are sex workers does not mean we're whores. It does not mean that we sell our, like we sell most of us just sell images of our body. And to me, that is not selling your body. But to a lot of people, that is. To me, selling your body is letting some stranger touch you for money. Nobody's touching me but my boyfriend. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, if, if I could offer my, my two cents on that, I think that um, I think we all sell our bodies. It's just what, are, what part are we selling? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you tell me, like, uh, sorry, but I, Gary, I, in my opinion, the guy building a house is way worse selling his, way selling his more of his body. That's true. Than the lady who, you know, takes twenty bucks to let you, you know, you know, do your business. You catch my drift. Yeah. So and like, and don't take me, don't get me wrong. I'm not putting strippers down or anybody that yeah. does that down. 
I'm very a big believer if they're not harming others and they're not harming themselves, it's none of anybody's business. Same. And we should just support it. If yeah. it makes them happy, support it. Yeah. If, it's, uh, it's, if they're, they're personally fulfilled and not harming anyone, it does you know, we pagans kind of have a rule about that. Uh, it's 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 called we, I think we call it the harm rule. It's like do what you will, but harm none. So that's exactly. we we kind of that that is a big role to play in our philosophy there. So, um, well, this is some this is some very dangerous stuff here. So, uh, one of the one of the other things that I have been seeing is that uh, when my, another way for us to help is to just pay attention and start following you guys wherever whatever platform you use just you know it's kind of use our wallet as our weapon type of thing i've been seeing that do you do you prescribe that answer too i mean yes but no because at the same time i'm the and a lot of people tell me that that's why i'm not as big as other girls i'm not the type to push my sex work on anybody like i go live on a different platform not tiktok anymore uh i can still go live there i just choose not to because of the a uh, percentage of children on there and mm-hmm. the you know bannings yeah. and stuff that happen yeah. so i go over to a different site that's all strictly adults and i go live there mm-hmm. um a lot of people will come in and my moderators will actually tell them about my only fans before i'll ever bring it up okay and then i have to be like yes i have that but you do not have to go there to get my attention Mm -hmm. like people think that they have to come into my lives and give me gifts or go subscribe to my only fans to get my attention to get me to talk to them and that's not the case you've stolen so much money from i'm just kidding i'm kidding (laughs) this is a joke (laughs) and i don't want to ever look like one of those girls i mean if those girls want to do it that way that's their business but yeah um i've also noticed like I, i find it more respectable when people are just like you know what i mean like I think if anyone, people would be more worried about it being underhanded. Like if you were just like, oh, yeah, you can talk to me anywhere. And then you only respond to the OnlyFans people, you know, which which you know, I know you don't do that. You know, obviously. I do probably- tell them that if they want an immediate like response from me, yeah, because I do get multiple messages on all my platforms. So it's hard to keep up with all of them. But if they want an immediate right then and there response from me, your best place is to message me on OnlyFans. And that's only because that's. That's top priority in my head to answer those messages because yeah. that's my business. Yeah, that's your job. Makes sense. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Um, I was just going to say that, like, like for example, there's another content creator I've seen on TikTok who does some or that does the same thing as you, but she's very much like, nope, I only talk to people on my OnlyFans, period. Uh, you got to pay for my time. And I'm like, you know what? That's respectable. I under, I don't I don't think that that's uh, anybody can complain about that. I think that everybody no. is going to be like, you know what? Makes sense. You know, that's her choice. We all make our own choices when it comes to taking care of our business. And that's what I love about this career path is it is our own businesses. Mm-hmm. Like we choose what we do, how we do it, who we talk to, all of that. Yeah. I have another friend who actually was telling me the same thing. That that was one of the things that she actually does like about Like she actually doesn't like the sex work aspect of it, but she does like that she has enough control to say, well, if you're mean to me, I can just block you and then I don't have to put up with you. Exactly. Or if you cross a boundary or a line, there's been a couple people I blocked off of my OnlyFans because I had told them repeatedly not to send me their own content unless mm-hmm. they were going to pay me to look at it. Mm-hmm. I was upfront and honest each time and they continued to do it. So they got blocked. Yeesh. I imagine the, the I, I would imagine the dick pics would get annoying, which still baffles <laughs> me. But people will be like, <laughs> I'm going to send my dick. <laughs> It actually happens a lot less on there than you think, but I, like I said, I have had to block a couple people who just didn't get the hint. Yeah, I, it's just, it was just, I just mean like it's just a common thing I have seen because, like, like I said, I'm friends with a handful of you know, you know, you OnlyFans ladies, and you know, because you're not the only one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lisa. How rude! I thought I was special. Well, at least I was the first. <laughs> <laughs> Mildly true. The other friend I, I, the other two friends I have, just keep breaking my heart. Yeah, just keep doing. (laughs) The other two friends I had, I, I, you know, both of them started doing it after, (laughs) after we became friends. Uh, So, look at you. You should be a recruiter. I'm just, I'm just. That's what I am. I'm like a, I'm like a military recruiter for only. No, (laughs) no, go, go. 
I have had Hi, friends. my name is Ben 10. Welcome to OF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't start that. I already have members of my audience making jokes about me selling feet pics on OnlyFans. I'm not even kidding. Listen, those are my favorite type of customers. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, until they saw my hobbit feet and went, ah! <laughs> And then I'm going to get sued. They're the you... easiest to please, and you barely got to do anything, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I ain't judging nobody. And whatever they're into is whatever they're into. I'm just saying, it's like, it's just my audience, like, I think they just like to troll me is what I think it is. You know, they just like to, like. They like to troll you and your troll feet. I get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So. I think this is the thing that I was going to talk about with the, the whole Exodus Christ situation. And I saw this on Twitter and I think that these kinds of things are, this is the scary part about the, all of this, right? Is, and the reason, and this is the important part. And this is, I hope my audience stuck around long enough to hear this part, because this is kind of the part where like, why are we talking about this on a Yu-Gi-Oh channel of all places? Because it does, because I think that these, these groups who are trying to stop porn, I don't think they're going to stop at porn. I honestly think that, you know, what's after pornography? They're going to go after art. They're going to go after music. music. They're going to go after... Look at what they did to, uh, what, who was it, Nas X? Was, yeah. Is that his name? Yeah, little Nas like, X, yeah. Try to make him out to be some kind of demon or something. Yeah, all over a music video. Yeah, they're going to go after, you know, I think they're going to, like, in, like the, on to pertain it to Yu-Gi-Oh! for my audience... We have monsters who are wear that are basically ladies who aren't wearing next to anything. You know what I mean? Do you think that they're not going to come for our game because those those same groups would totally come for our game and say that like, you know, you know, see this this half naked this this hussy Yu-Gi-Oh monster. It's it's encouraging pornography porn. and all that. Yeah. Yep. That's that's exactly what they would do. It's so it, that and that so it comes for video games. It comes for all social media, and I think that the big reason why people need to, to be ready to, to stand up and fight for you guys because, uh, to be honest with you, because because if we don't, you know, all this other stuff comes up on the chopping yep. block. And if it even if it like say we got taken down and they did come after you guys, then we're not going to want to stand up for you if you didn't stand up for us. Exactly. And the and you're right about the I, I think you're totally correct about the stigma when it comes to sex work is because I don't I think we need to really start fighting that, especially within ourselves as humans, because we have to realize sexuality is a big part of being human, you know, except for maybe ace people. Yeah, I'm, well, it's still like a big part of them in a way. Yeah, just, just in a different way. Yeah. And just saying I'm just saying that, like, you know, for asexual people, they're you know, they're, they don't really feel sexual attraction. So maybe for them, but the, it's a little different, you know, but the idea of is to say that for the vast majority of humans, uh, sex is kind of part of our, a big part of our existence. I mean, it's not only how we got here, but it's also part of what, part of our relationships, you know? Well, I mean, and it's been around since anyone can remember, like, yeah, yeah. It's one of the first occup occupations out there. Yeah, sex work, yeah. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts about, like, the idea of, like, I've seen that floating around, like, when we talk about sex work, about how, like, decriminalizing, like, prostitution and things like that. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, if they're going to decriminalize it, I understand that that might be a good thing for certain people. But at the mm -hmm. same time, uh, personally, I would never do that. Mm -hmm. Uh that's just a personal choice, but I don't look down on anybody who does. Mm -hmm. But if decriminalizing, if they're going to do that, then they need to put more effort into protecting these people because yeah. there are girls in prostitution that don't want to be there and that are getting treated, mistreated daily. Yeah. yeah. Even if they could just legalize it, have whorehouses or whatever, yeah. and have inspections from the government on it to make mm -hmm. sure everything's clean and being, the girls are being checked and, mm -hmm. That, to me, I feel like would be a win because no matter what, it's going to be there. Yeah. No one is going to stop that. It's kind of like drugs like that. You know, it's just better to do what they're doing with marijuana than, you know, and make it safe and legalized than to, you know, I, that's my equation to it. Because, like, you know, obviously as a vanilla person who's not involved in sex work, you know, I've got to kind of like, OK, well, it's kind of like this, this and this, you know. So nothing is nothing is really black and white anymore. Yeah, it's all gray. Everything is gray. <laughs>
Hey, I like gray. It's a nice. I love gray. It's a nice I look color. Great and gray. <laughs> <laughs> That's why all of my TikToks are in the gray scale. Right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like that's the, I don't know. It's, it's, I just wanted your opinion on these things because obviously you're somebody who's like in the thick of it and you know, these, these things, I don't know. Just, I don't know. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to help, I guess, in my own way to, to normalize it and like, and kind of get rid of the stigma. That's why I'm, I, I often try to have other kinds of people on here every now and then who have a different genres of entertainment. I mean, I know yeah. as a Yu-Gi-Oh channel, I'm supposed to stick to Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. And we'll get there. You know. Yeah, but you're helping people realize that we're not just naked bodies yeah. and sluts. <laughs> we're people. Yeah. We enjoy other things. We have opinions. We're smart. Most of us are educated. Yeah. Like, well-educated. I've, I've, I've heard some. And some of y'all do some amazing things. I heard about one sex worker who she uses her, like, excess money to... Uh, open an animal shelter. So, not only is, everything. Yeah, most most of us do that. Like everything that goes into my cash app that mm -hmm. gets donated in there. I don't take anything out of that. I donate it. Like I'm in a couple different discords from different TikTok groups. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first time you interviewed me, I brought up Wild Syndicate, the family that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, there are little parts to these discords where people will pop in and be like, hey, I'm struggling or a friend's struggling or a family member's struggling. And then whatever money I have in my cash app gets sent to them. One time I helped a family get a car. Uh, another time some people were struggling with some medical bills. Another time I think a girl was struggling with her rent. Just little things, anything I hear about. If I have anything in my cash app at that point, and I, call I send it along to them. And I call superhero. Golly, Listy's out here saving <laughs> people for realsies. No. Um, no, Lissy, we need to get Lissy a cape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would like a cape. I like capes. <laughs> well, you know, you are you are dating a, a thunder god, so, you know, you, you could just... According going... to everybody on TikTok, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For those of you at home who don't know the joke, uh, Lissy's boyfriend kind of looks like Chris Hemsworth, in my opinion, like, in, like the first <laughs> Avengers movie, if he was just a little on the thinner side. So, you know, we make yep. jokes about him being Thor. <laughs> Only my boyfriend doesn't skip leg day. <laughs> oh, oh. I feel like there's a that's a double layered joke there, but I'm not going to I'm not going to go any further than that. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, what uh, and since we're <laughs> I'm still laughing at the leg day joke. Anyway, <clears throat> I can put it I can pull it together, Ben. Pull it together. <laughs> <laughs> anyway i was gonna say like so what are some do you have any other websites that you're in particularly thinking about moving to since we're on that uh <clears throat> the number one i'm looking in the most right now is pocket stars pocket stars. uh i was looking into a different one i don't really want to say the name because the uh, i've heard allegations of the owner of that one which mm -hmm. has steered me away from it okay well, then we go um, I don't know. One. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the stuff is true, but I don't want to risk it. So yeah. right now, Pocket Stars is the number one thing I've been focusing on researching. Okay. Well, you know, we we'll go one at a time, and you know, and I think with any of them, you just kind of kind of see where you can, what you can do, and what your niche is going to be, and all that stuff. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, like, so, uh, what are some of the things that you're looking for when you're thinking about switching platforms? Are you, is payout the number one thing you're looking for? Are you looking for like what the terms of service? Are you looking for the overall vibe? I mean, what all is, what all goes into your decision making there? A lot of it is a vibe, like a gut feeling. Uh, most, some of it is the verification process, mm -hmm. how they go verifying the customers, because I don't want to be in the middle of some legal battle over. Yeah. them not verifying somebody and then and it they end up being a child or something yeah. on my site you uh that was my go ahead that was my biggest issue with uh some people telling me to just go off and do my own thing mm -hmm. and keep track of things that way and just send off my uh content my own way mm -hmm. i said no i don't want to do that because again one small mistake can land you in jail like yeah you don't want to accidentally like sell to some like 15 year old posing as a 30 year old or something using his mom's credit card or like i didn't keep track 
of everything that I was selling and I missed something and then taxes come up and they think I was trying to do like tax fraud or something. Yeah. I don't want to get mixed up in that. Um, but another thing is, is I have been trying to research how long the site has been open and if they had any change of policies Mm -hmm. and what they were because I'm not, I don't want to get messed around again. Yeah. Do you think that this is also going to make, I don't know if for like, you know, for, I don't know if you do collabs for your, uh, your adult content or not, but do you think that this also is going to have any kind of impact on people who maybe do do that? Like, okay, well, I'm going to go work with this other creator. Well, maybe now they can't because now they're they're on separate sites or anything like that. Uh, I don't, I don't think that would mess up anybody's collabs. I personally haven't done any collabs. Mm -hmm. I've never reached out to anybody for one and nobody's reached out for me, which it's not a big deal to me. Like I said, I do most of my work by myself or with my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think it would actually harm them because I feel like then that would give them exposure nope. on two okay. different sites. Okay. It's kind of like how we do it here, only with like, you know, for more of the vanilla stuff. Lissy does also do some vanilla content. You should check out her TikTok. It's pretty funny. There's lots of fun there. That's Yeah, that's you know, fun. my I bought a... Uh, this is going to sound silly, but I bought a hundred like uh, balloons that spelled out a hundred. Cause I thought I was going to hit a hundred K a few months back when I hit 92 K. I was like, Oh, it's just around the corner. It's going to come up and buy these balloons. And ever since I bought those balloons, <laughs> I've been just, sitting at 92 K. You're just like, <sighs> I, I it's like you. TikTok was like, she bought the balloons. No, no. How <laughs> dare she? you're not celebrating prematurely here. <laughs> I was just so excited. That's all right, though, because you're going to get there eventually, and then your children are going to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> then I just have to blow the balloons up. Yeah. Or make Thor do it. Probably make him do it. Yeah. <laughs> put, him to, put him to work. His lungs are younger by, like, seven years, so. <laughs> Is he a smoker, too? Uh, yeah, but he, does, he doesn't smoke anywhere near as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Lissy, are you going to be the old lady someday who's going to be like, I don't care if I've only got one <laughs> lung left. It's still going to be good. <laughs> I actually had somebody come into my Meet Me Live, which Meet Me is where I've been streaming lately. Oh, yeah? Uh, and they saw me smoking a cigarette, and they were like, Ew, you smoke. And I was like, okay, it says on my profile I smoke daily. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and my grandfather just passed away a couple weeks ago oh, from – it's it's all right. We weren't that close, but thank you. Um, he passed away from throat cancer. I was like, if that didn't scare me into quitting, you coming in here and going ill, that's gross, is not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people are just not intimidated by it, you know. I, I mean, it is what it is. I figure I've already had cancer, so and it wasn't lung cancer. So, hi, sweetheart. You can't be in here right now. Sorry. Uh, you got a pet? The cat. Yeah. yeah. It's one of my cats. She's very attached. I've got a dog down here who I'm afraid to move my chair a certain way or I'm going to, you know, run over her paw or something. I feel like she just wants to be on, on the screen. Well, there, ain't, there ain't nothing wrong with that. We, we like pets around here, so if she hops in your lap, it is what it is. We're not going to be offended. How dare you have a cat, Lissy? How dare I? Most people, when they see me on my stream, they see her because... Uh, she, like I said, is very attached. She actually hugs me, and oh, she bites my face cute. and gives me kisses. That's cute. <laughs> I feel that. Like, my cat Cece will do that. He'll sometimes pop up here and when I'm in the middle of a video, and I'm just like, well, he's here. So, you know. And I'll just... Sorry, I totally got us off topic. Now. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. You know, like, I think that really, uh, on the off topic thing, I'm just going to say, I really think that adds to what you were trying to say. You know, you're trying to re- remind people, hey, sex workers are people and we, they have multiple levels, uh, you know, just like everyone else. So, you know, I, I think going off topic well, is fine. And I think they would see that if they checked out like our other platforms, like yeah, then... uh, Instagram, TikToks, we do, like most sex workers have other platforms that they're not doing sex work on they're just being them everyday selves that reminds me of though like I, since since i've met you on tiktok and since we're on that topic of it do I, have you had any trouble with tiktok lately because of the being a sex worker and all that stuff 
I did get my link tree taken off, which I, I knew was going to happen. Um, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, but I did get banned, post banned, mm-hmm. for a day uh, right after I found out the news about OF. Oh. I posted a TikTok about it. But the thing that upset me was that the news article that I had showed in the background, mm-hmm. I covered up the word OnlyFans and the word sexually in the heading. And I covered still, it up with censor bars. And they still took it down. And they didn't even let it get posted. They flagged it right away and then post banned me for a day saying I had too many community guideline violations. Now, recently, the only violations I had been getting were off of duets that I was doing with other people. The other people's uh, videos were getting flagged and taken down, which then took mine down hmm. because it's a duet. That's just, that's just stupid. Yeah. It's kind of like but, what happened with that Scotty Wartooth guy, you know, TikTok Jesus. I don't know if you've seen oh, him. Oh, wait, uh... the guy that does, like, the punching videos? Yeah, and he's, you know, he'll, oh, like, okay. the, have the music or whatever, and then, like, he has the baseball bat, and he's dressed up like Jesus going. Yeah, he does a, a hostile horde, actually does a lot of duets with that guy. That's how I know that guy. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I, I follow that guy because, you know, I'm, I'm a big nerd. I like all the cosplayers and stuff like that, too, so, you know. Hostile is a... Uh cosplayer he's a really good cosplayer he did some stuff with uh darkness something darkness he's a big cosplayer i can't remember what the heck his name is now Um, (laughs) so many (laughs) the tiktok TikTok. names are so hard to remember yeah tiktok's got and tiktok has so many like talented cosplayers like i have never seen so many in one place and it's amazing yeah that i I will say this tiktok has a lot of had isn't is a really interesting uh, social media, but I definitely think that they have, they like all social media have some work to do. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, the, the bannings for one is just becoming ridiculous, which is why a lot of us are switching where we do our lives and mm-hmm. how we post our stuff. And... Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people who do what you do, what they're doing on TikTok is instead of having their link tree, they have the link tree in their Instagram and then only linking to the Instagram. Because I mm-hmm. guess TikTok's a little isn't like I guess as thorough about the, the yeah. links to Instagram. I'm guessing it, it actually took them a while to find mine. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, is it because like at everybody the bottom or something? me? <laughs> no, I uh, hid it in a way. Oh okay. <laughs> hid what that link was. Uh, I just put like 18 and up or something on it. Yeah. Instead of it just saying OnlyFans. Should put uh, only grown ups or something like that. You know? <laughs> uh. Well, a lot of us have found other ways of saying what we want to say without yeah. saying it so we don't get flagged. But the uh. thing that made me mad about when I got post banned was because I blocked those words on purpose mm-hmm. because I knew it would get me banned. But then for days after that, I'm seeing hundreds of videos on my FYP of other girls and guys complaining about the same thing and just full blast using the words like on their screen big only fans and i'm like why did mine get banned but there's it like i don't understand yeah that's another thing i've noticed is only fans doesn't or not only fans tiktok doesn't seem to enforce their rules very evenly and no. like for example like you know what i mean like you know they'll they'll block you from saying it but if i want to talk about it because i'm not somebody who's a sex worker you know well yet, and yet, i don't know if it's because right. i'm like, in the creator absolutely. fund <laughs> maybe are you in the creator I, fund I am in the creator fund, but I have never, ever been able to uh, cash out from it because you have to verify your mm-hmm. age or whatever. Mm-hmm. And every single time I've tried to do that, it takes me to a page. And then as soon as I try to take a picture of my license, it freezes. Huh. I have gotten in touch with them multiple times about it. And every time I get the same answer, oh, you have to go in and do this and do this and do this. And I'm like, I do do this and this. And then it freezes. And then they just they just give you the runaround. Yep, they just keep sending me the same thing over and over and over again every time I email them. Yeah, that's another. And I, and here's the thing: I'm also hearing that kind of thing. I'm also hearing that happening to creators who don't even do sex work, like they do uh, political talk, or they do, uh, you know what I mean? Like maybe they they're just a cosplayer. I mean, it seems to me it's kind of strange. The the TikTok's rules are very strange. They seem to like commentators who commentate on a lot of things. But they don't like people to commentate things about like sex, mental health, uh, 
or politics. Like if you're in those categories or and LGBT stuff, if you're like in those categories, you have to be, it seems to me like you have to take, be extra careful and take extra precautions. Also, also like I, like we like we both know TikTok has a big time reporting problem where if somebody just doesn't like you, they'll report you over and over again until TikTok takes you down. Or they'll comment on your stuff saying <clears throat> harsh things mm-hmm. when in reality, the only thing that they're doing by commenting is pushing other people's content like that content that they don't like mm-hmm. to their FYP because they are engaging with it. Mm-hmm. There is a thing on TikTok, you press and hold the screen and it'll pop up and ask you, do you like this video? Mm-hmm. And all you have to say is not interested and it won't show you content like that anymore. You know, YouTube has kind of a similar situation where I, I have seen this, especially in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. There are Yu-Gi-Oh people who we like. There are camps in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. I know that a lot of people in the Yu-Gi-Oh community may not want to uh, want to admit this, but there are camps. There are people who are like, you know, I'm in the casual camp. I'm in the competitive camp. And these two camps don't always like to overlap with each other. And there are other ones, too. Like, maybe they only like the cartoon, or maybe they only like the video games, or maybe they, you know, they're only here for the card game only, and the other and the other stuff doesn't matter. It's, there are camps. And these camps don't always interact. And But these people will leave hateful comments, you know what I mean? And they'll be like, ah, oh, you suck, you only talk about this, way, X, or Y, or Z, you know, or get a job, or, you know, they say stuff like that. What they don't realize is, is YouTube doesn't filter out negative and positive re- positive interaction they just see interaction the interaction so basically what they're doing is they may not push it to you specifically on youtube but they will push it to other people so if you leave a hate comment on my video just know now youtube's gonna go show my video to five other people that otherwise wouldn't have seen it that's that's how yep. that works so like if there's a youtuber or a yuki tuber you don't like then the only the thing really to do is to just not watch them I've actually been harassed to the point on TikTok where I've had to remove a video or put it as friends only. Oh, no. Yeah, it got so bad on a couple different videos. And I always know when it's about to start because it'll be a kid tagging another kid. Yeah, and that's when you got to go, nope. (laughs) Yep, and then I got to go in and block and go in and block. And for the one day, I think it was at least five, six hours, I was coming onto my phone every 10 minutes to block. Yeah. A bunch of people. Like, I have screenshots of all of it. There's also people And then who... finally I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm just going to turn it to friends only. Yeah. One of the things I've also seen with your page is that I have seen, maybe not just your page, but other people who do what you do for a living's pages. When you have TikTok is there are people who will use that information against you. And there are people who, like, for some reason, I don't know what it is about TikTok, but... For some reason, TikTok seems to be a cesspool of these, like, edgelords and these very conservative people who are like, no, you can't have that kind of content here. You know what I mean? And they and then they will take yeah. anything you say out of context and try to make it like, see, see, she's pushing pedophilia because she has a Batman cape in the background or some bullshit like that. In which it was like, what, huh? Where'd you get that connection? But, you know. Yeah, especially when I talk about my age regressing. Yeah, I get a lot of that. Yeah. I get a lot of, oh, you're supporting pedophilia because people don't understand it. And that's why yeah. we're posting about it to get people to understand it yeah. so that it. we don't have to continue to hide. Yeah. It's it's all about fighting the stigma, basically. And That's all we can do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And one of the things that I, I think that people would just better learn, would, would learn to just let it go. Like, if you don't get it, it's fine. You don't have to get it. There's a number of people who wonder why a 30-year-old man still plays Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, it's okay. You don't get it, get over it. <laughs> exactly. It's it's like I always say, I swear I'm going to get a tattooed on me. If they are not hurting themselves or others, it's none of your damn business. Yeah, make sure you get it as a <laughs> with a Hello Kitty tramp stamp, you know? <laughs> I already have a tramp stamp. You can't go back there. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn it. Well, there went my joke. Uh... For those of you who don't know, I used to make fun of Lissy in her lives and say, don't forget to show him the Hello Kitty tramp stamp or, and stuff like that. Yes, he did. I tried. Now he doesn't come into my lives anymore, but that's because I moved platforms. <laughs> yeah, I've tried. I tried to go over there once, but like, you know, I, I, the link wouldn't work for me when I tried it. So I said, ah, forget it. And I got frustrated. Yeah. Well, I mean, all you have to do is download the app and then just search my name. You'll, you should be able to find me. 
Yeah, I just I thought I would be able to do it on my my computer, you know. You should like be just, able to. Well, for I guess the link just didn't work for me that one time I tried it, you know. So and I didn't try it again uh -huh. afterwards. So, <laughs> you know, that doesn't mean anything. You know, it just means that maybe my machine messed up or you didn't understand my. You know what I mean? There's a number of things that could have happened. I actually got banned over there too for a week. What? What did you do over there? Isn't that the place for grown-ups? I did absolutely nothing. I was actually wearing this outfit, which is you... also my profile pictures outfit on that. What app. did they say? You were naked or something? Yep. I think that the whoever did that needs to like understand what nudity actually is. Well, I emailed them every single day mm -hmm. from the time I got banned till the time I got unbanned because they didn't give me a time of when I was getting unbanned uh, until a VIP gifter, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. emailed them through his own because they have their own uh, email, support mm -hmm. email for VIP gifters. Mm -hmm. um, he emailed them and said, hey, I wouldn't be on this app, nor would I have spent so much money on this app if it wasn't for her. I came on here to talk to her and you banned her for no reason. The next day, I had my account back. Ah, fans to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I was like, thank you. You don't know how much I... Because, like, I I really rely on that. Yeah. I don't make a whole lot on OnlyFans. I'm not in the top zero, zero, whatever percent. You're not, uh, you're not a multimillionaire? Are you telling me that... Uh, no. What? It's a awesome. I'm actually one of those girls on TikTok that are trying to tell other girls and men anyone that wants to do it mm -hmm. that yes, you can make a bunch of money on it, but that's not guaranteed yeah. at all. It's kind of funny to me that there were people who actually thought that there, there's a, there was a, a make money quick kind of thing to it. And I'm like, I don't think it's that easy. I mean, some people get lucky well, and are like, there's a lot of model. girls out there who are making it look like that. Yeah. They're posting these advertisements to other women saying, Oh, well you can make a shit ton. All you have to do is pay me and I'll tell you all the, trader secrets and i'm just like oh. i mean well that's that's a good business move on that girl's part at the same time i feel like they're kind of misleading. ripping these girls off and yeah. misleading them yeah that's i don't know that that feels kind of to scammy to me that's yeah what that feels like <laughs> because like yeah. what realistically what happened is is they're probably just lightning in a bottle you know what i mean they just you know or maybe they got bit. Like, I, there is one other lady I followed on TikTok who she made an OnlyFans after the after the fact. She got big on TikTok first, and then she decided, you know what, I'm gonna make money on OnlyFans so I can quit my day job. And a bunch of her followers, like I think a fraction of her TikTok audience, went over to OnlyFans, and she was talking about how she was making like a crap ton of money. And I'm like, yeah, that's because you got big on TikTok for being, you know, a cosplayer and being cute there. And then you know, you're not the you know what I mean? Nobody, and that's another thing I think a lot of people need to realize when when you make content anywhere, you have to advertise it. You yep. have to, you know, use, you have to tell your friends, hey, I'm on YouTube, subscribe to me. Well, and you a know. lot of people are afraid, like I get a lot of messages from girls, well, I don't want my family to know, I have kids, I don't yeah. want these people to know, and I'm like, okay, well then you're going to have to take a whole lot of extra steps. So that you can still advertise. That was the whole reason why I didn't hide anything from my family and friends. Why I'm completely open and honest about it all. Yeah, you got to make like a whole separate life if you have to do it that way. And I mean, and I, and I get it. I, I think of it because of the stigma part of it is. And it's not even maybe how your family might even react to it. Like, you know, it might be how your the neighbor Becky who's on the, you know, like for example, if you're a parent who's on the, you know, what do you call it? The PTA. Uh, the PTA, yeah. They're going to be like, well, you shouldn't be allowed to be here because I know what you do for a living. You know what I mean? Because she's a word we can't say on youtube <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah so i don't I, I just i i don't know the only thing that i've definitely been spending a lot of time in the last year trying to listen to people like women and sex workers and you know people who are de part of demographics i'm not part of so i can better understand their where they're coming from so that's why i'm telling you about all the stuff i'm hearing <laughs> well i appreciate it because i don't i actually don't have a twitter i don't tweet it's, I'm not into that. Yeah, it's. I mean, Twitter is a really good place to advertise stuff like OnlyFans. Just saying, you know, because they, they let you post neckies over there. But well, uh, I'll just send you my neckies, and you can post them for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! I'm gonna be like the middleman here, you know. And, <laughs> like, check out my, my friends' Twitter, <laughs> My Twitter uh, <laughs> manager. Oh, 
Oh God. Uh, well, on the bright side, this is my bird. A... <laughs> Say what? You can manage my bird. Oh God. Well, on the bright side, at least it's nothing I haven't seen already. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'm just saying, guys, just check her links out. You know, you might see something you enjoy. Anyway. It's true. Even my Instagram, and that's free. Yeah. And on TikTok, she's hilarious. Sometimes. I don't know. You may be. <laughs> also, like, I'm I'm easily entertained. I'll be brutally honest. Like, you know, like, I'm, I'm that's why on my channel, it's all slapstick funny. Because, you know, that's the stuff that makes me laugh. It's like, <laughs> he got hit by a baseball bat. You know what I mean? That's. Yep, that, that's me too. Yeah. I giggle at everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, you like know. earlier with my TikTok, you liked. Yeah, that made me laugh. With my twisted, my pre interview twisted tea that I had. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was just funny, especially like on the one where like the, the picture froze and you're like. <laughs> oh, yeah, licking it, I was like, things got weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, I'm just easily amused. It is what it is. You know, I'm, that's all right, though. That just means that no, no day is completely boring for me. <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah. Like, laugh at it. Yeah. That's, that's, why I, that's why I even downloaded TikTok, because I kept seeing funny stuff on other places. And I was like, well, maybe I should get TikTok. It looks like there's a lot of funnies happening over there. I like to laugh. Yeah. As long as you get on the right side of TikTok. There's oh, so many right. different pathways. <laughs> yeah it's kind of and twitter is kind of like tiktok in that aspect too you got to be careful where you go because it can be a cesspool there because you'll see people who are who are mad about all sorts of things that just don't make any sense like i remember i saw one lady got mad at another lady because she likes to dress in like frilly clothes and have like uh stuffed animals and things like that and she's not like a little like you she just likes that stuff you know what i mean yeah and I and she's all like, "You're promoting pedophilia by by owning stuffed animals. Make it make sense, you know right?" I mean? It's like the lady wasn't doing anything except showing off her. I think it was Squishmallows collection. Yes, yeah, Squishmallows are the best. They're so squishy. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was. I'm glad I. I'm glad I remembered that correctly because that's what it was. That's what. That's what it was that was causing. This other lady I saw on TikTok, and of course she's like, you know, she looks like she's like twice my age, so. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people that have an issue with adults liking child things, and it's just like, you know, we all said we never were going to grow up. Why can't you let us Peter Pan lovers alone? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not doing anything. <laughs> I mean, like, literally, come on, I'm playing a game that was technically supposed to be for children, so. Although, well, I look think... at TikTok. Technically, that was made for children, and now the majority of the people on there are adults. Yeah, who just like to do, you know, nerdy things. I mean, literally every f person I follow is doing some kind of art, comedy, cosplay, or, you know, talking about comic books or Yu-Gi-Oh, you know what I mean? So it's literally the Geek Hub. Yep. <laughs> TikTok missed out. See, they should have called it the Geek Hub. That's it. I'm starting an app right I, now. I'm going to steal all of TikTok's business. I feel, like, business. I feel <laughs> like that might be something else. <laughs> Geek, Geek <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if it is, I need to get that website because <laughs> I feel like I'm perfect. <laughs> no. We're going to make a <laughs> Anybody out there makes websites, uh, get hold of me. <laughs> Geek it's adult content for nerds. <laughs> it would be perfect. All the cosplayers could go there. That would be Yep, and all the spicy ladies could be there, and they don't have to worry about getting banned. <laughs> Especially could be yeah, spicy. The, only the spicy ones that are nerds. Yeah, or well, you could dress up and pretend to be a nerd. You know what? Actually, I, th I take that back. I think a, a website called Geek Hub that's for adult entertainers that are also in the on the geeky side, nerdy side of things, like would really kick off and make a lot of money because. And here's why I say that: because think <laughs> about how many people like to watch other people play video games. You're going to tell me that you wouldn't want to be able to watch a streamer do their <clears throat> adult content while playing a video game where you could see the gameplay? Cause most I've been trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> I'm just saying somebody, somebody was going to pay bank for that. Somebody would do it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think that we have kind of gone over everything we can really go over. We've been on for about an hour. So I think we're going to wrap it up for the audience. Um, guys, make sure you check out Lissy's stuff. I'm going to put it in the pinned comment. I'm going to have like all the links I can put on YouTube, you know, because YouTube might get mad at me if I post the, the fun ones. <laughs> well, that was they really need is my Instagram. They can find them all there. Okay, cool. Then I will, I will link her Instagram. You should go there. You know, obviously Lissy is absolutely stunning. So, you know, you, you're not, you, if you follow her there, you're definitely already winning. <laughs> And uh, he's always trying to flatter me. I, I'm good at it. It's it's my personal it's my personal superpower. <laughs> I am I'm I'm good at telling people good things about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so make sure you go check that out. And Lissy's got all sorts of stuff, TikTok, other things. You know, you should just follow her everywhere. She's also very funny, very talented, and uh, that's going to be in the pin comment below. Also, want to remind you guys if you want to support the channel. Uh, make sure you go check out your, your playmats. Uh, I have a, I, I will have the discount code in the as a caption on the on the screen somewhere when I mention it. So you guys can either do that or click the link in the description. So, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do that for stuff that you would already <laughs> probably want to buy anyway. Go and get some sleeves with Lissy's face on it and uh, tag her on Instagram. I guarantee you she'll find that funny. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> No, do it with troll feet. Troll feet? Oh, God. <laughs> Nobody asked for feet pics or I'm banning you. <laughs> All right. Peace, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>